this video here about the savings gap, the currency gap and capital flight and we'll bring in um, access to banking and finance as well. So the first thing that we really need to um, look at here is this problem of having low savings um, and let's just look initially at what are the causes of um, this problem of low savings and it can be things like you've got low incomes in your economy, um, you haven't got much skilled human capital so their earnings aren't very high, um, population is growing rapidly so it's difficult to save, you've got to keep spending, spending, um, poor financial infrastructure, governance and civil wars and uh, debt repayment as well so if the country's borrowed in the past then you know they can't actually save anything they've got to um, use any income generated in order to um, pay off past debts um, but this is the most important thing that uh, we need to look at within this whole video which is this this um, problem of low savings and why it leads to less economic growth and development and then this um, model called the Harrod Doma model as well. So let's look at this first, low income. So the problem with low savings um, really is that you start off with the idea of low income and so com countries which are um, developing often have very low basic incomes their subsistence level um, income, so they're spending most of their income on, um, you know, life-sustaining goods, food, and and that sort of thing, and so they really haven't got enough money to save. So their marginal propensity to consume is very high, marginal propensity to save is very low, and they put whatever savings they can, obviously, into banks, but there's very very little of it, and so firms or other individuals who want to borrow to invest haven't got the savings in order to invest so therefore there's low capital accumulation that's the build up of capital within your um, economy and so you end up with low growth which means you have low income which means you have inadequate savings and it's a sort of a poverty uh, cycle that is going on here um, within developing economies but it is important when you're writing about that that you also um, say well low investment means that you have low levels of aggregate demand, aggregate supply particularly, low level, lower levels therefore of GNI, part of the um, HDI index, and lower fiscal dividend, so you can't tax this um, lower low incomes very much, and so therefore there's less investment in infrastructure and merit goods. So you can see this uh, vicious circle really of um, low incomes leading to low savings but then that just gets reinforced um, year after year after year. So what does Harrod Nomar say about it? Well two economists who came up with this idea um, that economic growth is determined by two things. They said it's the level of savings which we just talked about and the capital to output ratio as well. Okay so let's look at the savings side savings is savings over income this could be either the marginal propensity to save change in savings change in income or the average propensity to save um, and let's say it's very low because the savings are low in other words a hundred million pounds of income within your community generates only let's say 10 million pounds of savings so the marginal in this or this case the average propensity to save would be 0 0.1 and the next thing to look at is what they call the capital to output ratio and that's it's the amount of investment or capital that you need let's say five million um, pounds worth of machinery to produce a million pounds worth of output so the ratio would be five we need five units of capital for every one unit of output and what Harandoma came up with is that the rate of economic growth up here is equal to the savings ratio divided by the capital output ratio. In other words, the rate of economic growth would be very low if savings ratio was low or capital to output ratio, this one here, was high. 
Okay, and you can just see that from this example here, that if, for example, you have in your country 100 million pounds of income, it only generates 10 million pounds of savings, but those savings are then lent to do some investment, but you need 5 million pounds of investment to produce a million pound of output. Well, with your 10 million pounds, you could only produce two million pounds more of output. So the change in this income, which starts at 100 million, is only two million pounds. So it's not a very uh, large increase in your income, simply because the savings is very low and you need a high level of investment to produce any unit of output. So hopefully you can see um, how, how that uh, model actually works and so therefore this is the problem of um, low savings. Now as I say what's quite worth um, you, you doing is to consider uh, different things together with this and the first one I would say is the currency gap which is sort of linked to this in some way um, and that's the difference between the level of exports in the country um, that are needed to create higher economic growth. In other words, um, the exports that you uh, can do as a country will earn yourself um, dollars in the market, in the world marketplace, and the currency gap is the fact that you're not actually earning enough to create higher economic growth and afford those um, imports. So, for example, the implications of having a currency gap is that you're unable to buy imports, you're not earning enough on your exports, and therefore you have to borrow, uh, bring in debt as a country, and this international debt will need repaying. And if you're you know, not able to buy your imports, uh, um, a lot of imports with your low level of exports, then obviously the exchange rate because of this, this debt can also fall as, as people, uh, investors leave the country um, take their um, savings out of the country and that can cause import prices to rise which causes another problem with buying enough life-sustaining goods and medicine so again you can see this sort of uh, vicious circle going on case studies at the moment brilliant case studies on uh, Sri Lanka unfortunately and Pakistan is building up to the same problem but over time Venezuela and Argentina have had similar problems. So um, the currency gap sort of goes hand in hand with um, the savings uh, gap. And then you've got the problem of capital flight, and that is any savings that do happen are then sent abroad. They sent abroad by the citizens or by governments. Um, a report out recently about the African continent, the whole continent of Africa, said that um, a year or so ago, $88 billion was um, sent abroad. There was this capital flight. It, it amounted to 3.7% of African GDP. And put that in context, it was 10 times the foreign aid flow that came into Africa. Um, so, you know, 10 times that foreign aid was, was leaking from Africa, as it were, and sent um, overseas to um, mainly countries like Switzerland, etc., where the, you know their banking regulations are um, more or less than perfect, let's say. Um, the reasons for the capital flight could be corruption, definitely, um, uh, government officials, a belief the economy is going to deteriorate, a belief the currency is going to fall in value, can all cause um, capital flight. But obviously the implications for development is that then the government won't have as much tax to collect, it reverses the benefits of the aid, less foreign direct investment. If you n think you're, you know, when you invest in a country that any uh, tax revenue, any profitability from that country going to the country, going to the workers, going to the government is going to leave the country, then you may not want to invest in that country. Less savings are therefore available. And the bandwagon effect that once people see one person doing it then everyone gets in on the bandwagon and the last um, problem in this area is 
access to banking and finance and credit, you know, if you don't have um, access and a bank is only an intermediary between individuals with money to save, firms and individuals who need to borrow it, if you don't have banking facilities, then you're not going to save your money in these facilities, so you're not going to get the investment um, and the inv borrowing that takes place. And there's a lot of countries um, around the world where um, the percentage of population with a bank account is, is um, worryingly low because they simply don't trust it. And so there are some solutions which we'll look at in other videos um, to try and help that. But this is the overview, if you like, of um, the financial side. I, I put this together because it's all about finance, really. Low savings, currency gap, capital flight, and a poor banking and finance credit system. All of that um, causing, or one of the causes of, um, a lack of economic development in some countries.